Hello everyone, fast boys, fast girls, slow boys trying to get fast, or just a random person who fell down the YouTube rabbit hole today and landed on this video, welcome. Thanks for joining me here today, you read the title, you saw the thumbnail, we're talking about seven mods to make your motorcycle fast. And considering we're talking about speed today, let's just cut to this chase and get right into it. The first thing you have to do to make your motorcycle fast is install a full exhaust system. Sure, you could just install a slip-on for a little more engine ASMR, but why stop there? You want to go fast, don't you? Sometime in somewhat recent history, the New World Order decided that hydrocarbons and other emissions from internal combustion engines were bad. It seems like a bit of a farce to me because nothing about spewing soot into the atmosphere for the sake of go-fast giggles seems all that unwarranted. But really, jokes aside, emissions regulations have become stricter and stricter over the years. And as a result, motorcycle manufacturers have to continue to make engines larger and more powerful with marginal gains to offset the restrictions exhaust systems. So, what does that mean? It means that hidden deep down in the metal guts of your motorcycle engine lies untapped potential. Just like what your guidance counselor in high school said about you because you spent all your time flirting with the lunch ladies instead of studying for your SATs. And the easiest way to start taking advantage of this hidden power within your engine is to install a full exhaust system. Compared to a slip-on system, a full exhaust replaces all the exhaust work from the engine all the way back to the muffler. A full system will free up the exhaust flow and the easier exhaust flows out of the engine and the easier clean air can flow in, which means more power, baby. Plus, you get a great sound, shed all of your excess weight from this bulky stock system, and give your bike a nicer look. Especially if your system has titanium headers and you get that sexy patina as they go through a few heat cycles. You gotta love that. If you're more easily allowing exhaust gases to flow out of your engine, the next step is to make gases a little bit easier to go in. This is accomplished by installing an aftermarket high flow air filter. An air filter does just that. It filters the air coming into your motorcycle to prevent microscopic WMDs from damaging your motorcycle's engine press soft spots. So you might think, isn't a high flow air cleaner a bit of an oxymoron? It seems counterintuitive that an air filter is capable of letting more air flow freely into the engine would also do an adequate job of filtering particles from the air. Well, lo and behold, OEMs are not prioritizing making cutting edge air filters. They're too busy designing bold new graphics or trying to get a leg up in the parallel twins arm race. They also know damn well that a high flow air filter is pointless on a stock motorcycle if they're just going to jam the stock exhaust full of more insulation and precious metals than a Tesla battery anyways. But there are plenty of aftermarket air filters from brands like Can n that are better in just about every way compared to an OEM filter. So once you've got your exhaust freed up and your intake freed up, you're very close to helping your motorcycle live its truth through harnessing the untapped potential deep inside its soul. And no crystals or full moon rituals are required. If you've got more air going into your engine, you're going to need more fuel as well. An internal combustion engine requires a specific air to fuel ratio in order to run properly. And while there is a bit of margin for error, you watch the video because you want to go fast. And if you want to go fast, you got to get those AFRs just about perfect. A properly tuned motorcycle will produce more power, have a more consistent and linear power band, have a smoother throttle feel, and probably be more fuel efficient as well. The easiest way to do this is to get a piggyback tuner like a Power Commander Power Vision. These piggyback tuners work alongside your ECU to adjust your AFRs. They typically have predetermined off-the-shelf maps that you choose based on the modifications you've done to your bike, or they have auto-tune features that collects data while you ride and makes adjustments accordingly. If you've done substantial mods to your motorcycle like new cams or a big bore kit, it may be worth it to shell out a little cash and have your bike professionally tuned on a dyno or have your ECU flashed entirely, which can unlock all the potential engine power, increase RPM limit, and modify the ignition timing. For the average schmuck with a common bike and basic go-fast mods, an off-the-shelf tune should work just fine and make quite a noticeable difference in the fueling of your motorcycle. I will say, however, having done ECU flashes and piggyback systems, I choose an ECU flash all day, every day. Have you checked out our new merch designs? We recently switched to a new merch provider and these shirts, joggers, and pants are so freaking nice. We also have some new designs you may enjoy as a lover of staying on that back wheel on your ride if you love doing some wheelies, you know what I mean? If you are a squid you love and need some motorcycle related apparel, look no further than your Sweet Papa Yam's Emporium of Kick-Ass Gear. I promise that you'll like the way you look, I guarantee it. We've always got some sweet promotions going on as well, so be sure to head over to shop.yamanube.co and get yourself some of our amazing merch. Now back to the show. Another pretty straightforward way to make your bike faster is to change out your sprockets. Sprocket changes are pretty straightforward and are a purely mechanical modification that doesn't require any fancy pants computer hacking like engine mods do. Unless you experience issues with your speedometer after a sprocket change, but come on guy, you're on a motorcycle, do you really need a speedo? You should be going faster than all the cars on the road and that's just about all you need to know. Because changing a sprocket is pretty straightforward, there's plenty of information online for the best ways to go about getting the best results you want. You want more instant torque? Go bigger in the rear, small in the front. Want more top end power? Go small in the rear, bigger in the front. Want your dad to respect you as a man? Get back to work and stop 
stop watching YouTube all day. Just kidding. Keep watching. Please, your dad sucks anyways. Just forget about him. A larger sprocket on the rear increases the difference in teeth between the front and rear sprockets, thus creating more torque to the rear wheel and in turn faster acceleration. But remember, an increase in download torque will slightly impede your top speed. Just something to keep in mind. If you're unsure where to start, try adding a few teeth to the rear sprocket. Rear sprockets are generally easier to change and may come in many sizes. A general rule of thumb going down one tooth at the front is the equivalent of going up three in the rear. So changing the rear sprocket will allow you to make more minute changes without risking an unrideable gear ratio. So what if your bike is belt or shaft driven? Well, it's never gonna be fast anyway, so you might as well just throw in the towel. If you're gonna be spending this time and money to make your bike more powerful, you should probably invest in your suspension to make it handle well also. There's no sense in having a faster bike if you aren't able to ride it quickly because your suspension is either inadequate or not dialed in properly. If you're running a non-adjustable suspension and are dead set on keeping your bike for a long time and have already invested in other performance mods, it would make sense to purchase some high quality fully adjustable suspension. If your bike already comes with fully adjustable suspension, but you're not convinced it's handling as well as it should, maybe search out a suspension guru that can dial your bike into your exact dimensions. On fully adjustable suspension, you're able to adjust preload, rebound, and compression front and rear. Preload is the amount of force that is applied to the suspension springs. Increasing the preload will make the suspension stiffer, while decreasing it will make the suspension softer. In a nutshell, it's preloading it, as the name implies. Rebound damping controls how quickly the suspension returns to its original position after being compressed. Increasing the rebound damping will make the suspension slower to return, while decreasing it will make the suspension quicker to return. Compression damping controls how quickly the suspension compresses when it's subjected to a load. Increasing the compression dampening will make the suspension slower to compress, while decreasing it will make the suspension quicker to compress. From the factory, motorcycles are set up in a general way that might not be ideal for unique physique. Whether you're a short king or more built like an NFL linebacker, getting your suspension dialed in can make your motorcycle handle like an all new bike. You may not need to go out and buy Olin suspension, you may just need to tweak what you have. Actually, you probably do. And if you're going faster and riding your motorcycle harder, you're gonna want to have more effective braking. Better brakes to go faster? You betcha, bozo! The faster you can slow down, the faster you can ride. That is very apparent with track riding, and if you're just a ding-dong street squid, having better brakes will help control your Hayabusa with the NOS kit. There are a couple different brake upgrades you can do to your brakes depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Maybe your bike has a few gray hairs and you could benefit from a simple brake fluid change. Or maybe your master cylinder lacks any sort of dynamic feel that makes it hard to have as much finesse in your brakes as you'd like. Or maybe you want to go all out and replace your rotors and calipers with top of the line performance ones. Regardless of how involved you want to get, the faster you make your bike, the better you need to be able to make your brakes. It's not like you've ever seen the look of fear in a Harley rider's eyes after they've had to install a big bore kit and a hot cam in a Harley Davidson with stock brakes and then take it for the first test ride. God will quickly show his wrath to those who are stopping power does not match their engine's output. The last medication if you really want your motorcycle to go faster is a turbo kit, baby. You say you want to go fast, but how fast do you really want to go. Is 300 wheel horsepower good enough for you? But in all reality, turbochargers and motorcycles are kind of exclusive to Hayabusa's and big Harley Davidson's. Likely because both bikes already have a large and heavy in their stature, and the addition of a turbocharger that has less of a negative impact than adding one to a 400 pound motorcycle, where a turbo under full boost would shoot the bike right out from underneath most riders. So if you have a Busa, or a Touring Harley, or a ZX14, and you want to go faster, get a turbo or a supercharger, but I prefer turbos. If you have pretty much any other motorcycle that needs more power, get a big bore kit. For most motorcycles, there is no replacement for displacement, and for many popular platforms, big bore kits are readily available. They're especially common for motorcycles with like single cylinder thumpers or twins. In the simplest terms, a big bore kit replaces your cylinders with those of a larger bore and a larger piston. Wow. Effectively increasing your displacement without making the engine itself larger. And once your engine is already taken down, now is the opportunity to build it to your heart's content. But a word of warning. Once you tear the engine apart, you can quickly move from making my bike faster to cursed project bike outright. So proceed with caution and make sure to get it done right the first time. So there you have it, seven mods to make your bike faster. Will you do all of them? Bet you won't. I bet you're too chicken to put a turbo on your Ninja 650. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Fact. The village in Wales called this, if you can't pronounce it, has the longest single name word in all of Europe. It was given this name in the 19th century as a publicity stunt to have the longest train station name in Britain. It loosely translates to St. Mary's Church in the hollow of the white hazel near the rapid whirlpool of the Lelincilio of the Red Cave. Which, I cannot say that word. I'm not even going to try. Goodbye.